How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. I have no complaints. You know, it's Sunday. <laughs> right, right, right. Yes. So I am going to just have you start by introducing yourself. So I am Jay Moreau. I am a new author to the urban fiction world. Um, I just, this is my first book that I've released. I'm actually a children's book author as well, but it's just, this is my first urban fiction book. That is so exciting. Now, let us know the title of this book. It is Forbidden Fruit. Yes, where and can we find it? It's on Amazon. Um, it is on Amazon. Now, when you look it up, you do have to look it up under Forbidden Fruit. It's a uh, part one. Um, it's a part of a series. Um, and it's its subtitle is a summer in Savannah short story. So the back, the backing of the book is actually located in um Savannah, Georgia, where I'm from. Hello. All right, now shout out your hometown. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Now you're saying you're a new author. Yes. Yeah. What children's book would you say, like, is your bestseller at this point? Um, so I've only written one. Um, it's called Harry the Handsome Butterfly. Um, and I I mean, to me, I felt like it did very well. But um, I don't know. I'm, I'm new to all of it. So it's to me, I'm just happy when somebody just scrolls on it and is like, hey, I want to buy that one. So I'm just happy about it. Whether it sells a million copy, copies or 10, I'm just happy when anybody else buys it. Absolutely. That is beautiful. Um, I think that's a great way to look at it too. A lot of times when we're like a new author, I think subconsciously we start comparing ourselves to other authors that we might see and we get real caught up in looking at the charts on Amazon, like, all right, it's my release date, like how's it right. going? Right. It's easy to get caught up that way. But I love your perspective because that's exactly how I've felt all these years. It's just mm -hmm. listen, I did it. Right, right. It's an accomplishment. So I'm really enjoying the ride so far. I, I I feel like I dove in and now I'm just kind of like here. And I now I feel like, oh, I'm excited to be here. I feel like my mind is just always in story mode. So yes. I'm loving it. All right. Now, with you saying that your mind is always in story mode, what is your writing preference? Are you a pen and paper type of person? Are you writing notes on the laptop? How do you do it? So I usually write notes on my phone, honestly, because I always have my phone with me. So I just kind of pull it out. I might think of something and then I have to go ahead and start writing it into my, inside of my notes. And then later on, I'll take those notes and upload them to my computer. And that's how I'll go ahead. Most of the time, by the time I upload my notes, I'll have most of my story, if not half of it. Um, so that's my preference. I definitely prefer phone notes. See, and I think that's like, a path that I started on, but then I realized it just, I needed something different. I needed it all like just in one article because I would mm -hmm. lose track of my notes, but there's um, no right way to do it. Right. It's whatever you feel comfortable with, I would, in my opinion. Absolutely. Now, let's see. Have you ever incorporated a personal experience into a completely different genre? Um, you know. Um... So I would say my um, children's book is based off a of personal experience. I already, I really wrote that one um, based on a question that my son asked me. I'm actually a mother of four. Um, mm -hmm. And my son at the time, he's seven now, but he was three then. And he was talking about, we were talking about like attractiveness and how people look. And he was like, yeah, you know, girls are, girls are pretty, but you know, boys, boys aren't pretty. Boys, boys are handsome. So I just thought that was a good take to go off of. So I kind of made that book based on a question or a comment that my son made at three years old. You know, our kids tend to be our inspiration a lot of the times because sometimes mm -hmm. they ask those questions and we'd be like, where did you pull that from? <laughs> <laughs> right. And that was one of them. When he was three, I was like, oh, okay, let me let me do something with this. So it's mm -hmm. beautiful that is so beautiful um are there any characters you've written that you feel a deep connection to yeah so in my last um urban fiction book um cherry is when i was creating her character i made sure to accent the fact that she's a she's a darker skin girl and i know now everybody includes it now but that was just important to me for me to actually make sure that she looks a little similar to me um it has kind of one of my same mannerisms now everything that happens in the story has nothing to do with me but um 
I just feel like that's important. Important for um, those of us that are darker complexion, that we have some representation out there. So that was important to me. That is beautiful. And I do agree. I know just like 10, I would say even just 10 years ago, you really didn't see that representation on book covers. Um, not as often, or the characters weren't really described that way or whatever. It was always, like she has caramel skin. She has this, she has that. She's high yellow. Like, yeah. I don't know. So I do love how as a society and the book community has started to include mm -hmm. every single shade, every shape and size, because there's so many different versions of us. <laughs> right, right, right. I agree. Beautiful. Now, have you ever received feedback that made you reconsider a story or a character you've created? Um, so on my re the recent one, um, one of my friends let someone read the book and she was like, I'm gonna get you some feedback. So I said, okay. So she read the book and after she read it, one of her um, comments was, um, it was kind of a lot of twist towards the <laughs> end. And she was like, you know, so I felt like it was so much happening. It was hard for me to kind of keep up. Like, wait, what happened? And so she was like, it was just kind of too much at the end. So um, going forward, because this, like I said, this is part of a series. I've been paying a little bit more attention to that. Like, let me don't, you know, kind of stuff it all at the end. And it's like, people are just like, oh, Lord, where do we go from here? Um, so now I've kind of, I'm a little bit more cognizant of that when I'm writing. My only thing I would say is you write your books how you want your story to be told because in the book community, you'll have four people saying there's too many twists and turns. Four reviews later, you'll get hit with, there wasn't enough twists and turns. You tell <laughs> your story how you want to tell it. Don't let the feedback get to you too much. If you feel like that's the way you want to write your story, do it because the people who started reading it, maybe when they're coming back for part two, they might be looking for more twists and turns. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate that, that advice. Absolutely. Because I've been seeing you promoting your book. I think originally I saw you promoting on Facebook. I think mm, I yeah. want to say that's how I, I stumbled across your books. And I was like, all right, let me let me start reaching out to people. Let me start seeing. I think it may have been on a Facebook group. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, um. So another one of my friends who's also in this series with me, she has been also advertising where she where she sees fit to um, put us all out there. So we've yeah. been. We've been all trying to get out here um, as I on our first author journey. So that is beautiful. Let me find out. We have to do a collaborative video next time with everybody. Just oh shout yeah, out. they would love that. They would love that. That would be great. Let me see. Um, what is one writing project that challenged you the most, and how did you overcome it? Um. So I I wouldn't say I've quite overcome it yet. But one of my books that I'm currently working on is more of a children's um, chapter book. Okay. So, and it's, it's very spiritual based. So I have to tap into, I got to get out of my, you know, my urban fiction hood, get ready to go down mindset and kind of tap into the my other side that is very, very spiritual. So it's it's involved me to do a lot more studying because I have to try to flip the characters a little bit, but it's and it's for children as well. So I have to make sure that it's on a level that children can understand. So I I don't outline when I write. I just write. But I'm I find myself having to outline that book because I'm like I just I don't want to miss anything. I want it to make sense for children. So that's beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. I get it with that. It, when you are writing in different genres, it is a mental thing. You do have to get out of like, okay, I can write a book this way. When you're hopping into something else, it does take a different hat you have to put on. So I know exactly what you're talking about. But that, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And then um, what is the most valuable lesson you've learned in your writing career so far? Um, kind of speaks to what I said earlier. Um, just write the stories. You know, if you get caught up in, oh man, I only saw one book today. Um, it, I feel like it just kind of, it makes you become more like a negative Nancy or Debbie Downer, like eh, people not reading this. You know, right. when, in, when in reality, it's like you still have to kind of build a readership. When you're a new author, I did not know until I became an author that the there were so many urban fiction authors. Like, yes. oh man, it's so many books out here. So 
now that I'm seeing that, I'm like, man, I'm just going to tell my story. Whoever is interested is room for everybody. People are just going to read and you're going to build up your readership. So don't, don't pay attention to that. Just release the books, write them and release them and move on. So that's what I've learned. Just write, release, move on. That is beautiful. And are there any events that we'll be seeing you at this year or next year when it comes to books? So my my husband that is also an author, um, he's getting ready to launch what he calls the writer's block. Um, we've done one event down in Savannah. Um, what it is, is just four times a year, he gets other writers together, whether they write poetry, erotica, whatever type of writing you do. Um, he will get you together and um, we'll be able to set up, it's like a festival, um, but he wants people to be able to see because we feel like we're not seeing enough. So just to be able to see. So he'll do it in different places, different areas, um, and do different genres. So uh, I will have more stuff at those events. As of that now. is absolutely beautiful. I'm excited <laughs> for you. I'm very excited. And you said it's called the Writer's Block. Yes. That. That's mm -hmm. beautiful. Where can we find you on social media? So right now I am under um, Quenisha Washington, which is my first and last name on Instagram. So I'm there. Um, and I think that's it. Um, the other places I don't really market too much on, so it's just Instagram right now. I just want to watch one thing <laughs> and then try to perfect that. And then I'll add more. That makes sense. I think it took me a while as well. I started off with Facebook then I got comfortable. I moved to Instagram. Mm -hmm. I just hopped on TikTok two months ago. I still don't know what I am doing. Right. So right. <laughs> <laughs> right, I agree. It's a lot. So I'm like, just one for right now. I could just manage this one and then move on. Right. And then my last question is, if you could collaborate with any author or writer, alive or deceased, who would it be? Um, oddly enough, I grew up. <laughs> my aunt is going to kill me. But my I have an aunt that's not very far off in age from me. So she is the one that actually introduced me to urban fiction. Not like gave me the book, but yeah. like in her house, she had Eric Jerome, Eric Jerome Dickey on her shelf. So imagine me at 17 years old seeing the book. And I'm, like, ah, I'm going to get into reading. And at 17 years old, I was grabbing cheaters and between lovers and getting deep into them. So I always mess with her now and I'm like you're the reason why I'm writing these books because mm -hmm. you the one introduced me she was like I didn't tell you to read those books <laughs> yeah so I would say Eric Jerome Dickey because I feel like he he kind of started me on the urban fiction thought process yes that is beautiful I feel like he is one of those he's one of those OGs in urban fiction like yes. there's no way you can mention his name and someone's like who is that like it just doesn't happen right right yeah so I would definitely say him it's so well i do appreciate you coming on here allowing me to interview you this has been really fun for me oh thank you thank you i appreciate you you know building this platform for us to be able to come on because we just as authors you do not feel like we get enough um you know enough of the spotlight and most people don't know our stories on how we get started so thank you so much for having me and i look forward to um watching the interview and also seeing who else you have on here well, thank you so much again. I'm going to be in touch with you soon. If you could shoot me any pictures of the book or you um, through an email or through Messenger, just for me to be able to include in the interview, that would be so helpful. Okay. Well, thank you. I sure will. You're welcome. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Sunday. All right. You too. Thank All you. Right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.